Brady Krizowitz from Be Preferred Cure, and welcome to 10 Questions with Pro. Today's guest is Stefan Cle- Cleveland, who is an American professional soccer player who plays as a goalkeeper for the Seattle Sounders FC in the MLS. Cleveland spent four years at Dar- Dartmouth College playing college soccer before transferring to the University of Louisville for his senior season. Now I have the pleasure to, ha- to have Stefan on 10 Questions with the Pro. Stefan, thank you for being on the show. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to it. Thanks for coming on. All right. Okay, are you ready to jump into these questions? Let's do it. All right. Why did you become a goalie? Oh, man. Start from the, the big general question. Uh, so my brother my brother was a goalkeeper when I was growing up, uh, and I think he was uh, he was one person that I always looked up to. So growing up, uh, when I first – and he's, he was much older than me, so when I made my first select or, or club soccer team – uh, I figured I'd just give goalkeeper a try and it kind of stuck from there. I played, you know, played half goalkeeper, half field for a couple of years. And then, uh, eventually I, I committed to full goal, full-time goalkeeper. Yeah. Once you start, I, when I first started off, I was half field, half goalkeeper, but then I went in goal and I was like, oh, I think I'm pretty good at this. So I stick yeah. to playing goalkeeper. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's about how it happened. I was probably 11 or 12 when I, kind of committed to full-time goalkeeper and got, you know, into the goalkeeper training and decided that's where I wanted to be. Yeah, I think I was around six when I decided to be goalkeeper. Oh, wow. Yeah, started young. Yeah, and the younger the better. Yeah. Um, What motivates you to keep training hard to maintain being a professional goalie? I think uh, that's, a, that's a great question because uh, I think a lot of people, once they make the pros or – or at least when they're working up the ranks, they have this perception that, you know, once they sign their first professional contract, they've kind of made it. Uh, but that is, that's just a start. Um, you know, that guys are always coming out of college. You know, that guys are, you know, always going in for your spot. Everybody else wants to be where you are. So I think, you know, that drives me a little bit to kind of fend off all the people that want to take my spot, but then also I want to take the guy spot above me. Uh, I want to, I want to be a starter in the league. I want to, you know, be a national team, you know, whatever it is, there's always another level. Uh, there's always somebody better than you that, that you can strive to, you know, to take their spot. Uh, and then I think I also just love, love the process of getting better. So, you know, practicing, uh, lifting, like, you know, whatever it is, that's going to get me better that day. I love, I love improving and then being able to look back, whether it's a week or a month or, you know, a year, uh, past in the past, can look back and say, man, I, I'm better now. And I think that's a good feeling. Yeah. Um, I've always wondered, what is it like, like signing that contract to be on your first ever pro soccer team? That's amazing. Uh, it's kind of a stressful time because you, I got drafted out of college and once you get drafted that base in within the MLS, all that really means is that, uh, that team has rights to in preseason. So I got drafted and by no means does that mean that I've signed a contract. Uh, so then I went into preseason and, and I was quite fortunate. The fire wanted to sign me very early on in preseason, but you know, several other guys in my draft class, they, they really had to earn their spots for the, in the first three, four weeks of preseason. They were, it was basically like a trial uh, and they didn't sign their contract for until, you know, the last week of preseason. But uh, but it is it is an amazing feeling because at that point I was like 22, uh, so for the past you know 15 20 years I always had this dream of of being a pro. So then you know writing your name on that piece of paper, seeing your name, you know it, uh, next to MLS is is awesome because that's that's when like I said your dreams are realized. But again it's it's a new starting point and there's always more to go. Yeah, thanks for answering that. I've always had that on my head, and I agree with you what you said the first part. There's always going to be somebody working hard for you. You got to earn that spot. Absolutely. Um, what steps help you achieve the ability to become a professional level goalkeeper? I think that enjoying the process uh, because. You train five days a week. This is during season. You know, you train four or five days a week and you play one game. And in the 
in the off season, obviously, you, you know, you're, you're training all off season. And so there's way more time spent in training than in games. And that is where you really have to enjoy and get better because even in a game you make, you know, if you make eight or 10 saves, that's a really busy day. Um, and so you have to be prepared for the one save in the 90th minute uh, that, you know, you need, you need to make to keep your team in the game. Uh, so I, I think you can't, you can't live off of those glory moments uh, because if, if that's what drives you, there's going to be a lot of bad moments that bring you down also. So it's, you have to appreciate the process. You have to appreciate getting better. Uh, and then just living that, the lifestyle of, of a pro is, is taking care of your body, taking care of sleep, eat, uh, how, how you, how you eat your diet, all, all aspects and facets of life are so important and you really have to enjoy it because if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to be happy because it is, it is an entire, you know, 24 hour job. Uh, no, you're not on the field the whole time, but everything you do in the other, you know, 22 hours that you're not on the field impacts your performance on the field so much. Yeah. Cause you got to enjoy what you love. Cause if you do something and you don't like it or you don't really like to do it, you just, that's not what you like. You got to do what you love. Absolutely. And if you don't love it, you're not going to, you're not going to play well. Uh, it, I, you definitely play your best when you're happy. Yeah. It motivates you. Yeah. Um, if you weren't a professional goalie, what else would you have wanted to be? Oh man, that's a good question. I, uh, I didn't, I kind of all growing up, I always wanted to be a soccer player or, you know, some sort of athlete. I, I liked basketball when I was younger as well. Uh, and I never really know, knew which job I wanted um, after soccer, and I, <laughs> I don't think I still do. But in college, I studied engineering, uh, and I, I really liked engineering. Uh, I would like to put that to use at some point. I, I like developing, you know, designing what, whatever the project is and kind of the tweaks. And, and again, it's that process of it uh, and the problem solving. So someday, hopefully my uh, engineering degree will put be put to use um but exactly how that is i don't really know yet yeah i um i never really thought about that because that sounds pretty interesting because at uh, my old school i used to do stem okay yeah and it's kind of like engineering and i really never thought of that because i had a lot of fun doing that yeah it's uh it's it's great you can uh you can i like engineering and, and the stem uh area of of the world because it's it's kind of concrete it's like it's this way or that way and and there are, you know many different solutions on how to get there but you either have a solution or you don't uh whereas you know english or philosophy or you know i, I love t having those conversations but i don't i don't really I, you know i don't really like writing papers or I, I like the the black and white correctness of you know engineering yeah um what have you done on the field and off the field that you're most proud of? Uh, let's see. I think on the field, um, one of my, my one of my best moments was two two years ago when I made my MLS debut. Uh, I and it was my my first MLS game. It was in Salt Lake actually, and I. <laughs> I, I played well. It was a great game. And, and that's when I really realized or felt like I had accomplished my dream of playing soccer because signing a contract is, is great and all, but that doesn't mean that you're going to play. And when you play in that first game and, and you get that adrenaline of standing on the field, you're one of the 22 guys on the field and, you know, you look around and you see the crowd and, and you see your Jersey. Uh, I think that that was a, a massive checkpoint in my career. Uh, and then off the field, I just think that the the friends I've made, uh, I've I've been really really happy with, and I think that if I can help them do what they want to do on the field, and help whether whether they're my teammates or anybody, if I can inspire somebody to be a little bit better at what they do, I think I've done. I, I'm happy with that uh, because mm -hmm. I I don't want to be. I don't want to be a negative part to anybody's day. And I think that I, I try to be positive and I try to help my friends that I know around me and, you know, doing things like this, um, you know, having, having a conversation with you and whoever else sees this, hopefully I can inspire them to, 
either go work a little bit harder or have a uh, you know better view on the day or something something like that to where I can help people. Yeah, um, I'm hoping if soccer all does work out, I'm hoping when I do end up stepping on the field, there will actually be a crowd there. Yeah, I know. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we get crowds back sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what goalies or soccer players inspire you to want to be a professional? Well, I think growing up, uh, I was a big Chelsea fan. And so I really liked watching Peter Cech. Um, um, I'm not sure if he's the exact type of goalkeeper that I am, uh, but I, I really liked I remember watching him a lot and Edwin van der Sar because Manchester United was really good when I was growing up. Uh, and then I think as I got a bit older, um, Neuer and Ter Stegen are, are amazing to watch. Neuer is, you know, kind of, is an exception to all humans and that he, you know, nobody is like him, but he, he is so good at what he does. And, and, but that even just, you know, kind of being an outlier to, you know, to like the normal athlete, uh, he is, he still works harder than, you know, so many people. So I think that, you know, no matter how close you are to the top, seeing those people still work harder than everybody else. Yeah. Is what inspires me to, you know, to work hard. Yeah. Manuel Neuer changed the game forever. He's always going to be a great goalkeeper. Even when he retires, I wouldn't be surprised if he's like a coach or still does goalkeeping training. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he is, he is so good at what he does and he's done it at such a high level for a long time now. Yeah. Um, what are your favorite gloves to wear in net and why? I grew up with going to soccer camps with a guy named Eric Vodder, uh, who, and he actually knew John Bush really well, who I see your reference oh, yeah. HBG. <laughs> um, and growing up with uh, EV, he's always been a Royce guy. So I really like to wear mm -hmm. Royce gloves. Uh, and I've, I've had a contract with them for the last four years. Uh, I, so I, I like Royce a lot. Um, but I, you know, I, I talked to Bushy. I know, I know he likes his HPG gloves. Um, but yeah, Royce, Royce are the gloves that I've been wearing for the last several years. Uh, they're reliable and they have, they have so many different fits and, uh, different cuts that you can really find one that you like. Yeah. Um, I actually know John Bush pretty well. I went to a camp and, uh, we, uh, I used to be on this thing called the leadership team with, uh, old, uh, old GK group. And, uh, we actually went to dinner with John Bush. Oh. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I uh, I had coffee with John Bush in the off season because uh, he was in Indianapolis, which is where some of my family is. Um, so I was I was in the area, had coffee with him, and I've I've known him for a number of years. I actually remember I was uh, probably about eleven or twelve years old, and my club coach said because he this is back when he was at Columbus Crew, and I was uh, I grew up in Dayton, Ohio, which is about an hour hour and a half from Columbus. And he said that he was able to get me in uh, training with Bushy. And so that's how I met John Bush as I started uh, training with him. He was doing, uh, he had a good a group of goalkeepers and I got in there, uh, trained with him for a little while. And then, you know, I kind of stayed in touch with him ever since. Yeah. I think we might be getting John Bush in the show in a little bit, right, dad? Yeah. I think he's supposed to be coming on in a little bit. Yeah. He's an awesome guy. He's had, uh, you know, an incredible career uh he is definitely uh, definitely one of the people that i looked up to because you know if you look at his stature he does not fit the typical prototype of a goalkeeper but he is somebody that has you know similarly been at the top and worked harder than everybody around him no matter his age i mean that's how he played till he was 40 years old um he he works so hard and you know he he earned every spot that he got he, nothing was given to him yeah, I actually really started um, Keeper for a Cure because of John Bush. Oh, really? Yeah, he was awesome. a huge inspiration. He told us that we need to use our skills being leaders on the field and off the field. Yeah, uh, that's he, he couldn't be more right. And you've done, you know, you've done so well with it. I, this is an incredibly admirable thing. It's definitely more than I was doing with social media at 10 years old. <laughs> <laughs> um. Is there a save that you've made that really sticks out in your mind? Yeah, uh, in my in my first game, 
I, I actually remember in, in Salt Lake, and Salt Lake is a bit of an is at a bit of an altitude, so the ball comes in a little faster than normal. Uh, I remember the very the first shot. Uh, it was kind of at an angle, and it came I think to the first post and hit off the top of the crossbar and went out for a goal kick. And I remember watching. I was like, "Holy cow, that came so fast!" And that was the first <laughs> shot I faced, and because everything in the game is faster than in practice. Um, yeah. And then you know, five minutes later we had a corner and the corner kind of bounced through to uh, Joao Plata, who was on the back post and he hit a, a side volley down to my left side. And I, it was a, it was a good quick reaction save and I pushed, pushed it out wide and we cleared it out. And I, that was my, my first MLS save. And I think that save gave me a bit of confidence of like, all right, here I am. Let's do this thing. Yeah, that I always once I make a save in a game, even if it's a quick, easy save, I always get motivated. I was like, "All right, we got this." Yeah, you you definitely every game is different, and you got to build it into the game. Uh, so yeah, yeah that first save under my belt was one that I'll always remember. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give a young goalkeeper like me that wants to play at a professional level? You I can't can, hear you. To the, uh, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, you cut off for a little okay. bit. Sorry. Uh, what advice would I give to you to get to the professional level? Yeah. Was that the question? Okay. Yeah. So I would just always work as hard as you can. I think work as hard as you can. Um, and one of the things that actually Stephen Fry and I have been talking about is that you know, goalkeeping is something where there are so many different angles that you need to take uh, to whether it's your hand position, your set position, working on your passing. There's so many different variables to, you know, a good performance. And, you know, when you feel like you've got something down, whether it's, you know, say you've, you feel like you've got low balls down really well. It's not something that you can just kind of check off the list and be like, okay, next thing. It's something that you always need to work on. So yeah, I think kind of always finding your strengths and weaknesses, identifying them, and then really working on those weaknesses to get them, you know, leveling up, but then really honing in on your strengths in order to, you know, make those apparent to those around you, when it's coaches or scouts or whoever it is that's seeing you, um, it's you want them to be able to say, man, he like he is really good at crosses or he he's really good at, you know, catching the ball uh, or or, you know, great, great with his feet. Uh, so, you know, really mm -hmm. make your strengths something that are identifiable and unique to you. Uh, yeah. But more than that, my my goalkeeper coach from college always said, you know, there are you know, three rules uh, and it's always have fun always try your hardest and never give up. And I think those are applicable mm -hmm. to, you know, to all of life, but especially soccer. Cause if you're not having fun, then, you know, what are you doing? Like, why are you doing it? So I think yeah. well, make sure you're always having fun and, you know, I think never give up and try your hardest or, or, you know, given. Yeah. You, cause you gotta find, you gotta find out what your weaknesses are and get those better. And just because you're good at one thing, you can't just like, all right, I'm done with these. You got to continuously work on everything. Yeah, because because everybody else is always getting better around you too, so you need to make sure that you're not just trying to stay, keep your head above water. You always always want to be improving everything. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have any questions for me? Oh man, what are what are your biggest goals for the next, let's say, two years, five years, and ten years? Okay, um, so two years I'm hoping to be on, I'm still hoping to be on an elite team, and I'm hoping to get, I'm hoping to raise more and money, more and more money for Keeper for a Cure as we go along. Um, four years, uh, 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 training with some pro goalies like meeting some people I've interviewed in real life and starting to train with them. Mm -hmm. And in 10 years to get signed with the pro to get signed on a pro team and probably uh, try and be on the men's national team. That's awesome. Those are, those are great goals. And it's awesome that you have them on the top of your head because you always have to be thinking about your goals and, you know, working towards those every day. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have any other questions? Oh man, I don't think so. I think that if if there's any other way I can help you out and help out cure for your cure or for a cure, I would I would love to. So if if there is there any other way I can help you? 
Um, spread the word. Absolutely. I can do that. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, Stefan, thank you so much for coming on 10 Questions with the Pro. I really appreciate your time. It was an honor to speak to you and learn more about you. Remember to check out the show and all our other shows on our YouTube channel. We also have a podcast version of the show on Spotify and iTunes. Just search Keeper for a Cure and remember to subscribe and like. Check out our website, www.keeperforacure.com, to see how you can help my Keeper for a Cure campaign, which is raising money for the Phillips Cancer Center Cancer Center in Charlottesville, Virginia. I'm Brady Krizowitz, and my guest was Stephen Cleveland. Thank you for tuning in to 10 Questions with the Pro.